Artificial intelligence. This term has been buzzwords these days, right? But what's on your mind when you hear about this term, artificial intelligence? For me, it's gonna be like a, a super highly intelligent machine, like Wally. -E. Wally -E is a what, what form of the robot that's very smart, funny, and also likes robot. <laughs> so I really like I really like Wally, -E, right? Um, and if we are on the same generation, our childhood might be accompanied by this robot. It's a highly super intelligent robot, robotic cat from the future, Doraemon. Yep, you heard it, Doraemon. If you think about it, it's actually super intelligent uh, AI robotics because it can solve any kind of problems. It can communicate with the humans very well. It also has feelings. So uh, it's one of the forms that's a super intelligent robot, right? So to be honest, when I was a childhood, I was, I dream of having a Doraemon by my side. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another thing about AI could be Jarvis. It's the AI that helped Tony Stark build Iron Man, right? And also manage his house. And another AI is also, maybe if you think of, uh, from another science fiction, it's like, like Terminator, the human killing machines, a network that they try, uh, try to kill the whole humanities. This, this Skynet. So what are the same things between all of these robots? All of them are highly intelligent uh, AI, right? They have specific feelings. They are general. Uh, overall, they are very smart. But what about our current state of AI in the world? If I quote from Jan Lecun, he's a Facebook AI director, and he's one of the, uh, one of from the three uh, <coughs> publisher of the deep learning, the godfather of deep learning together with Joshua Bengio and Geoffrey Hinton. He said that we're very far from building truly intelligent machines. And in fact, these experts say that our current AI is not even as smart as a rat. Yep, you heard it right. Not even as smart as a rat. Because the current AI can only do very specific things. Let me give you one example. Right? So imagine that we already have a tons of data of pictures, right? So here I have pictures that label as airplane, automobile, bird, cat, etc. And I would like to build a neural network model. So it is one form of, of AI. Um, I would like to build an image classification. So I train this model basically to understand what kind of picture is it, right? So from all of this model, I fit into this neural network and I get the model trained. And if I give a new picture to this neural network model, it will try to classify what kind of picture is this. Okay, it predicts trucks. Perfect, right? But what if I give it another picture, a handwritten image picture? Can it still uh, detect what kind of picture is this? No, because we train this model using a truck data, car data, birds, etc., but not a handwritten image. So this neural network cannot predict uh, something that they are not trained with, right? So Back again, our current AI can only do very specific thing. Very specific thing, that's first. And it's only as good as what kind of data you fit it into. Mm -hmm. But given all these uh, specifics, AI actually has saved us a lot of time. What I mean by a lot, it's really actually a lot. Even if I have to accumulate, it's like a thousand years. I'm not exaggerating, let me tell you in uh, after, after a bit. Yep, so it really saves, it saved us time a lot. Okay, let's take a look back at this image classification model. Right? Uh, what about this classification model? Uh, now I try to train a toddler. I would like to uh, train him or her uh, basically to classify what kind of image is this? Imagine how long that you, uh, you will take to train this toddler to basically to classify whether this is an airplane, automobile, car, trucks, could it take weeks? Maybe, depends on the age, right? Uh, could it take months? Could be, or maybe even years. But the AI can train them in just a very snap, just a very, uh, very instantly. Let me give one, one, one another example. So another example of AI is this one, uh, a machine learning model called AlphaGo. It was built by DeepMind in 2016. And in 2016, this AI able to beat the human world champion of Go, Lizzie Dole. 
And are you curious how it can train to beat the human world champion? Basically, it learns about 100,000 human games of Go. Amazing, right? And so if, we have, uh, if the one average of the human game of Go is played uh, maybe 90 minutes, 90 minutes to what, two hours, so it's about 22 years worth of experience of playing Go. Can you imagine? In 22 years, I'm able to complete my elementary high school, eh, elementary school, I go to junior high school, senior high school, I complete my bachelor degree, I even uh, able to complete my master degree in that time. And yes, so, uh, but imagine, can you guess how long does it take for this AI to train these 22 years? In just three weeks. It's, it's amazing, right? The 22 years worth of experience of playing Go can be learned by this AI just in three weeks. Imagine that, uh, so it's until it to, uh, it's able to be the human world champion. Amazing, right? Let me give you one another example. An example that also built by this DeepMind is OpenAI5. It tried to learn Dota 2, about 10,000 years of experience just in 10 months. And it has been tested that this OpenAI5, it has a winning rate about 99.4% against the professional player of Dota. It's so amazing. So this is the thing that AI can really be, uh, ha have a superhuman performance if they are given a very specific task, if they are given a very good amount of data. Okay, but AI is actually not just playing games. It's actually everywhere around us, even in your pocket. Let me give you one example. Instagram, our daily apps. Its newsfeed is actually tailored to your preferences. How, can, how, how does it do that, right? Uh, because it knows what kind of pictures that you like, it knows what kind of post that you commented on, it knows how long do you stare at this kind of picture. Oh yes, it knows how, how long you stare at one picture. If you look in, into that uh, puppy picture for one minute, it knows. If you look into the, watch this video about uh, a cat, cat swimming or maybe a puppy swimming, it knows <laughs> how long that you stare at this video. So all of these are tailored uh, they build an AI basically to make you more engaged into this app, right? So it's, it's amazing. That's making you more engaged on, on this app. So have you, if, you, if you're like me, have you ever felt that you just plan to scroll Instagram before you sleep? Initially, you try to uh, just scrolling for like 15 minutes and then turns out it's been hours and sometimes maybe it's already morning and then you're just scrolling for Instagram, <laughs> right? So you're not even aware that you have been that engaged to this app because their AI has made you uh, really engaged with the, your feed because it's been tailored to your preferences, but not just Instagram. Let me give, uh, give you one another example from uh, one of the right hailing app from a, company, uh, from a country, is Gojek. So in 2010, when, when Gojek first launched, it's very manual, right? When there is a customer, need to order a booking, they have to call the customer agent, right? Hey, I need, uh, I need someone to pick me up at, at this certain location. Okay, and then the customer agent reply and say, okay, let me uh, allocate one driver for you. And yeah, then the, the driver come to you, pick you up, and done. And in 2016, actually, Chase, uh, they launched the first mobile app, right? So at that time, they changed from the human agent into a more automated, and, and next, they're using AI to allocate drivers to customers. So how, imagine how, how much time do they save, even this. Let's say there are millions of bookings every day, and for each booking, it's handled about 20 to 30 minutes by a human agent, right? And so if it, in total, it takes, a, every day, it takes like 50 percent years if there's only one person to manage all of those bookings. Yeah, so imagine that there's a team of 50 agents. It's gonna take them the whole year just to allocate the booking on that day. You get it? Uh, see? Uh, so AI has saved us uh, 50 years every day. So imagine this it just lasts for 20 days. It's been 1,000 years. It's amazing, right? Another one example is uh, they use AI to make the platform safe for everyone. So they use the data basically to look into the human behavior. One of these examples is the human movement. So 
can collect from the GPS data points. There's about billions of data points every day, right? So let me give you an example. Does it make sense if one day there is a user in Kemang and then on the next minute, suddenly it jumped to Ancol? Just in one minute, they jump about 20 kilometers away. It doesn't make sense, right? Uh, definitely, it's not, uh, honest. it's not an honest user. Uh, they maybe trying to, try to uh, scam or they're, they're trying to do bad things to uh, our, the users on the platform. And so here we have to tackle all of these kind of things, right? But imagine that these kind of data points have to be eyeballed by human validator one by one. Can you imagine how many years will it take, right? And with an AI, it actually saved us about 19 years every day to protect millions of users. It's amazing, right? So if you combine it with how AI has set, uh, allocated drivers, it saved about 70 years one day or one single day. So it's amazing, right? AI actually has saved us uh, more times than you can ever imagine, actually. And AI is not just saving time, it's also saved lives. So recently, there is a news from MIT that they tried to collect about 70,000 of audio recordings. These 70 audio recordings have the audio of people coughing. <coughs> yeah, you hear it correctly, so coughing. So from these 70,000 recordings, actually there's about 200,000 of coughing sampled audio. From this data, they tried to create an AI that is able to predict whether someone is uh, COVID positive or not. And guess what? Their AI is even able to predict what 98.5% whether someone has COVID or not just by the cough audio. audio. It's amazing, right? So imagine that, including asymptomatic. So it's not just a symptom as a guy that already has shown symptoms, but also the asymptomatic people. So imagine that this kind of AI has been implemented in your device. Imagine how, uh, it can detect COVID this earlier than, than we possibly think, right? So if, uh, if someone can be detected much earlier, they can be, make a self-isolation. Hence, uh, they, don't need, uh, they can prevent to spread the disease uh, more wider. So it's uh, pretty amazing. Another example is the heart attack uh, detection. So one company in Copenhagen called Corti, uh, they analyze about 161,000 uh, emergency calls. So those are the audio, the call to the ambulance. Hey, I'm asking for ambulance. And based on that call, they're able to create an AI and reduce about 42% of undetected out of hospital cardiac arrest. It's so amazing, right? It really saved thousands of lives. But given all of the achievement by AI, so what do you think that we should really be aware of? Do you think that we still need to worry about the human killing machines that are still in our, that's actually it's on our imaginary? No, if I can tell you one thing, it should be something like this. Yep, uh, you look it correctly. It's a social media news feed. Like what I said before on Instagram, social media, our social media news feed is actually tailored to your preference, no matter what. If it's a fun thing, like you like puppies or not, okay, so uh, maybe your news feed uh, filled with puppies. I like to scuba dive, so my news feed will be filled with uh, scuba diving pictures. So it's, it's pretty awesome. But imagine that there is something uh, sensitive like politics or something else is quite more sensitive. Mm -hmm. And if I look into the research in 2014 by Pew Research Center, we are actually today, we are more divided than ever than what happened in the past. So this, take a look at, take, let's take a look at this chart, right? Uh, in 2014, there is a graph about the uh, they survey about the Democrat supporters and also Republican supporters. And somehow compared to the 10 years ago or 20, 20 years ago, it's become more polarized. So we are more polarized uh, on, on this kind of views because someone who supports Democrat on their news feed, will be, they, they will see uh, many things about the Democrats and vice versa. And another survey uh, told us that these people, uh, these supporters, in Democrat, uh, many more pe people that think badly about people that support Republican, and and vice versa as well. Can you imagine that? If uh, if you 
you remember that what happens in Indonesia political situation a couple of uh, yeah, couple of months, couple of years back? It's quite similar, isn't it? If you, if you imagine that someone who supports candidate A, they think very badly about people who support candidate B, and vice versa. So let me ask you one thing. Who, whoever watched this that has left the, our chat group of families or long friends because have a different views of this, right? Can you imagine? So actually we're today is way more polarized than ever. We're divided more than ever because, because of our social media is tailored to our preferences. If I support candidate A, my news feed will be filled with news from candidate A. And I will think that, oh, supports from candidate B is very bad. They're wrong, right? And vice versa. That makes us uh, more divided. And so my message to you is, if you look into your news feed in our social media or in any news, you might want to, want, want to think or want to double check, hey, is, is this correct? Does it, uh, does it make sense? So uh, you cannot think that your side is the one that is true. You have to think that you could be wrong, right? Or maybe the other side could, could be right or vice versa. So these kind of things that uh, hopefully you can be more open-minded that everything that you see in your social media is actually tailored by AI according to your preferences. So please be careful, please be open-minded about whatever you see on the social media. And there is one thing that AI still don't have, which is wisdom. Lastly, if I have to quote from Stephen Hawking, he said that we all have potential to push our boundaries through technology and to think big. Even we are now at a very exciting times and place because we see all of this kind of power, right? And actually our generation are the, future, are the pioneers of that technologies. Like what I mentioned before, the neural network, uh, the system to detect uh, heart, heart attack, the system to predict a COVID. Everything is a uh, uh, system that is able to beat the human world champion. It's all made in our generation. It's so exciting, right? But there's one thing. If we see our future, our future is actually a race between the growing power of this technology and the wisdom with which we use it. Let us all hope that the wisdom wins in this race. Thank you very much.